So, uh, we're listening to the fire. They just called a knockdown on 29th Street. Um, we now have a pursuit that's gone all the way down to like Long Beach. They flipped around, CHP took it over, and they're now heading back northbound toward us. It sounds like it originated in Newton. I don't know what the original want was for the suspect. I'm asking the guys for info. We'll see. We'll see what. We'll see what they come back with. Sorry, I've got them listening to the radio down here, but um, we're going to be flipping around, uh, trying to get a passing shot and see where this ends up. Again, it did start in Newton Division and the Waikia Altima. I think that's that's the one that. Yeah. Uh huh. From Wilmington. Okay, so we got a little bit of time, not too much, but um, again, we're going to get around these freaking people that aren't going. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to head down here. My usual spot <laughs> is where we're going to go. And yeah, 29th Street, the fire, that's turning out to be uh, nada. So we're done with that. The pursuit did come out of Newton, so I'm a little worried that our suspects might get off the freeway just before uh, where we're going to set up because Newton Division's kind of just to the to the east of where we're at. Um, but I think we'll be in a good position. Obviously, it's a safe spot, so I'm always always a fan of safe spots. There is another option. We could go to. I'm trying to think. We could do like 51st Street. Uh, through the 110. Through the 110. All right. All that information, all that build up, all that thought process, for nothing. <laughs> for nothing. Yes. We're not good. Yeah. If 51st Street is where our little buddy. Oh, look at all the helicopters. Look at all the helicopters. Oh, my goodness. There are so many helicopters on this pursuit. Oh, my goodness. A uh, 499. I'm looking at like a pack of helicopters following that, uh, following that pursuit down the 105. Um, they passed the 110. So I'm not uh, going to be setting up for passing. Uh, keep an ear on it. See if they hit the 405 and come north. And then uh, obviously you or myself will be in play depending on what he does at the 10. So our suspect, <clears throat> he's continuing westbound on the 105. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on, is he going northbound 405? I didn't copy that. Okay, copy. 455 is going to be paralleling on the 110, and uh, four, or 499, we'll see what he does here. So, he, uh, it sounds like he passed, well, it doesn't sound like, he passed us at the 105 and the 110. We were going to flip around, set up, oh, beautiful shot of downtown. We were going to set up for a uh, passing shot, but he ended up uh, continuing past the 110, and now he's heading over to the, uh, he's heading over toward the 405. Sounds like he got off on Sepulveda, and now we are out of it until he comes back. It's like a spider web, right? If the fly flies out of the spider web, the spider's not going to jump out and get it, unless it's a jumping spider or a trapdoor spider, obviously. I'm not a spider expert. Uh, <laughs> however, um, it sounds like he's going to continue down the uh, down the 105, and if that's the case, then we're not interested. We're going to go to our little uh, our little spot here, though. That's what we're going to do. Our little spot, and you know what? We're actually going to pull up. I'm going to back up, uh, and then we can uh, I'll pull up the uh, TV stations. And we'll put up the pursuit, which is being aired on pretty much probably every station, considering how many helicopters we just saw. But we're in a good spot right now. We're centrally uh, located. If he does, oh, and we can hear CHP. So that's cool. Let's see. Uh, I'll load it up right now. We can take a look. Let's go to. Let's try NBC. Let's see if they've got it. Uh, Southern California election results. No, not what we're looking for. Let's try KTLA. Oh, he's blocked out. Oh, here we go. High speed pursuit. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see if it loads. Come on. Come on. There we go. Cool. So there's the there's the pursuit that we are listening to right now. <laughs> 
code 37 vehicle northbound Lincoln from Manchester. It is a new code 37 falling okay. pursuit that now CHP is with again. Northbound Lincoln from Manchester. So that's what we're uh, that's what we're monitoring right now. The guys were just talking about it. It's a uh, high speed pursuit of a stolen vehicle. Uh, code 37 is code for stolen, so it's a uh, stolen vehicle. Looks like he's blacked out. Um, he's heading down Westchester Parkway, uh, or sorry, McConnell Avenue uh, across a Lincoln, um, and they're doing about 80, what, 70 to 80 miles an hour. It looks like totally blacked out. Let me see if I can back up and get us a better uh, signal. We're kind of in a we're kind of in a bowl here. <clears throat> oh, they're saying Lincoln northbound. Sorry, so he's going northbound on Lincoln, uh, and the airship. So they're filming from a really far way away here, and that's because he's near uh, LAX. So there's a uh, flight restriction for the helicopters, the news choppers here, uh, where if they're following somebody near the airport, obviously they're going to have to abide by all of the uh, flight restrictions. So that's what we're listening to right now. We are not interested in it as of just yet it's 11:50 p.m every news chopper is over this right now this is like the top breaking news story for <laughs> for la always the high speed chase with us um it looks like he might have done a u-turn it's hard to tell they're trying to find oh there he goes they lost him for a second so we'll see where he ends up going again there i think he said northbound um on lincoln so if he ends up bumping into the um the freeway again, then if he goes north up to the valley, then Keith would take over and that would be his deal. If he comes uh, back eastbound on the 10, because it did come out of this division that we're in right now, which is LAPD Newton Division. If it did uh, come back this direction, then we would be interested because then it would come into our, our little spider web. Again, I'm not an expert on spiders. I know about jumping spiders, trapdoor spiders, black widows because they're dangerous, brown recluse, and what's the other one? The, um, oh, I'm blanking right now, the, the one at the trains. The orb weavers, that's it, that's it. So, not a spider expert. I don't like them too much. But again, it's like we're in a web, and then these are all the things that are that are near us, but we're not uh, we're not heading to it. So, that's the deal. It looks like KTLA's flying away from it uh, as it's 11:51. Uh, Let me see if uh, ABC is going to stay on it or Fox. Um, Fox might stay on it. Uh, Stu Mandel is a, a personal friend. He does the. Um, oh, here we go. He does uh, the helicopter stuff for Fox now, Fox 11. But yeah, we got ABC over it. Oh, hello. Oh, so close. Oh, so close. <laughs> I love the reactions. But it is super dangerous in all seriousness. These, uh, these types of incidents are extremely dangerous. And you've got a car that's blacked out. Let me turn down his commentary so we don't have like dueling commentary here. So when you've got a pursuit, with a uh, with a blacked out car and he's running red lights oh slow motion here we got a, the slow motion replay it looks like no that'll buffer so if he's running red lights and um and uh oh why do we have two oh that's weird it's showing on on both things here so if you got a guy running red lights and you got police cars right behind him what are you going to do if you're driving along you see red and blues behind you you're going to pull over right so cars end up pulling over right into the path of this guy so really, uh, really dangerous situation. But um, it's uh, we can hear our area. We're tuned into our area right now. Again, if he does start coming back this direction, he's at Lincoln and Westchester. Let's run that right now. Uh, or sorry, Lincoln and uh, in Westchester. Uh, Lincoln going northbound. Lincoln's very high speed right there. They're not putting the speed up that I'm seeing right now, but he's he's mo he's really moving. <laughs> Really, really moving. We're right in front of LAX. They're actually using the LAX um, passageway right there on the uh, on the outbound. Uh, I don't know if they actually held the flights, but he's right on the on the coast. He's going up the coast. So, yeah, that's Lincoln and Sepulveda. Let's pull it up on the map here. I'll give you guys an idea of where we are and where that's uh, where that's happening right now. So he's going uh, right by right by LAX, which is right near the ocean here. And, oh. Eighth and Windsor, I'll, I'll put that in the notes just in case that turns into something. So, there we go. So he's heading northbound on Lincoln. He's gonna run out of, uh, he's gonna run out of uh, space here. And it's either gonna continue up Lincoln, he's, he has two options, he's either gonna go up 
continue up Sepulveda, continue up Lincoln, and he could jump on the 90 and come back, you know, down Slauson and come over there. Um, he has a couple options. He can go all the way up to the 10, take the 10, 405. He has a ton of options there, or he could run it all the way up the coast. So, depending on how familiar this guy is with um, with the city, uh, he's actually going under the airport right now. If you look at this, he's going under. He's going under LAX. If it loads, oh my goodness, we might miss it. Yeah, look at the LAPD. The LAPD airship going over the runway at LAX. That means that all the air traffic is being held right now at uh, at LAX, which is nuts. And he has not come out the other side yet. There he is. So he's going on the. Uh, looks like he's getting back on the 105. He's going back eastbound. So I think they're wrong. He's heading southbound. Because if he was at Lincoln and Sepulveda, he's heading southbound to the 105. Hey guys, it looks like he's heading back uh, to the 105, and it looks like he's going to be going uh, eastbound, setting up to go eastbound 105. <laughs> so, hey, that puts him back in the right spot. If he heads over here, jumps on the northbound 110, then we're in a good spot. We'll actually see this car that we're looking at. Hmm. There they are. Come with me. Three thirty one, I'm just north of Expo, I'll get you passing. Suspect's coming by Tay. He's coming right here at 120. Back back up just a little, right there. He's doing about 120 miles an hour, so he's gonna be fast. Here we go. Five's got passing at Expo uh, 331. I didn't see it. Where uh, looks like airship's turning. Is he orbiting? What are we doing? Nice. Eastbound 10. Damn, that car was walking. Holy cow. All right, copy that. I see you got one media ship overhead. Looks like uh, possibly Fox and then uh, LA County Sheriff's Arrow. Uh, 455's got you passing. It'll be in your inbox uh, when you get to the conclusion of your pursuit. That thing was moving fast. So, stolen car, blacked out. We saw him earlier. There goes another CHP unit. We saw him earlier on the, uh, the live stream for ABC. Um, but yeah, and the exhaust didn't sound too good, did it? It sounded like the muffler came off or something. <laughs> So, yeah, passing shots are always uh, always a little sketchy, but we did that one uh, very well. And then uh, Randy's staying with it, so what I'll do is I'll grab his footage at the uh, termination point. So we'll take you there. Oh, with Movie Magic right now, actually. We could probably take you there right now. All right, so that suspect we were watching earlier um, just crashed into... Two other cars, we might have people trapped and the suspects are still... Hey brother, I'm not hearing you too well. Uh, just get to San Pedro and Pico. 467 and I are gonna be um, code six with you. And, but it is your call, it is your incident. So make sure you just grab our footage, copy? All right, so we've got... Um, Randy has basically chased this thing around God's country, so we're we're um, we're gonna just back him up. 
um, do some filming and stuff like that. We've got units. We got units rolling up. We got the airship right here. It's like right here. So that unit's blocking. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go up one. Units looks like they're chasing somebody. We gotta be careful, they might be chasing somebody on foot over here. And we don't know if these guys have guns or they, they're just going over there. We've got, where is the car? Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Yeah, we're here, we're good. Hang on, I think we have suspects on foot. <sighs> hey! Hey, Randy's here. Stay here and help Randy here. I think we might have suspects down the street. I'm gonna go find the suspects, right, Steve? What's up? No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Just, just stay, stay here and help Randy, but I think he's code six. I didn't see him. Let me make sure Randy's here and then we'll, uh, where is he? Where is Randy? There he is. All right, cool. All right. Get in the car. Sorry. All right, we're gonna come back here. Jack's here with, uh... Cool. Perfect. Okay, there's no suspects in the car. That means they went somewhere. That means they went somewhere. Where did they go? Where did they go? Where did they go? Where did they go? We need to find them. So I saw units going down the... Uh, look at Randy. He's like in the car. <laughs> Randy's like in the suspect vehicle. That's nuts. Oh. All right, so Randy's good. He's going. We need to find these guys. We just had those suspects flee from there. Randy's got it. Jack's there. Where did they go? All I have is a male unknown wearing dark clothing, possibly wearing westbound on 12th. Westbound on 12th? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, copy. Uh, we'll take that's a look. That's back there. That's back there. Westbound on 12th, so they're going. Westbound. Westbound on 12th. So we're looking for a guy with uh, with dark clothing westbound on uh, westbound on 12th. Airships looking. They're going to be looking at alleys. They're going to be looking everywhere. Every oh, there's a guy right there down that street. Can we turn right here? Yes. I saw a guy in that alley just now. So the guys are getting the shot of the crash, but I would love to get a shot of the suspect being taken into custody. And how did they how did they not see him running out of there? That's like nuts. There's a guy coming through this alley right here. Right here. Did you see the guy in the, the jacket? Did you see him or no? Oh, look at this, this is creepy. <laughs> is it a gray jacket? No, he said dark colored clothes. They want to see. Yeah, there's a unit coming up to this guy right here. There's a guy walking right here, dark colored clothes with a jacket and there's two units behind him. You see that? Mm -hmm. They got their spotlight on him. I think that might be the guy. I think that's the guy right there. The way he's walking, he looks he looks kind of messed up. You see that? Yeah. Let's see if he runs toward us. If he does, then it's gonna be our guy. I think that's, I think that might be our guy. Maybe, I don't know. He's kind of getting out of the way from. No, he's stopping. Huh? He's 
walking with a limp. Suspect has a camo jacket or not. Okay, I got sound from the person I instructed. Also, I'm now. Okay, perfect. Uh, stand by. Hang on a second. 12th and Wall, guys. We have another uh, 331. Get 467 over to 12th and Wall. I think there might be another suspect that they're taking into custody. Stand by. No, I'm north of 12th. I don't know if that's where I'm... Stand by. I don't know. They just asked for 12th and Wall. 467, yep. That's, that's where we're at. Hey, uh, four, uh, four, six, seven, I'm here with a possible, but they might have another one closer to 12th and Wall, um, which is kind of where I am. I'm at 11th. I'm in the alley uh, on 11th between San Julian and Wall is where I am. I don't know if that's one and the same, but um, that's what I got. Okay, if it, you'll see my unit on 11th, if it's the street, um, if it's it's the guy that they've got in custody here, then I've already got him, we're good with him. But I don't know if this is the guy, they're, they're trying to figure out if it's the guy. So, um, we'll uh, we'll see if the, we get it confirmed here, but I'm uh, I'm in the alley between San Julian and Wall currently, uh, between 11th and 12th. Where are we, who are we? He doesn't, the guy that is in this alley doesn't recognize him. It looks like they he might have It's funny because I saw him, when we came down I saw him limping and I thought, oh man, I wonder if that's the guy. So, I think we're in the right spot. Well, 
Not confirmed yet, but we'll see. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Like so, well, when I saw him, he was limping. He was like, he had a limp. So, so uh, that's the description. Yeah. Right. So, we'll see. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this. Oh, here. Take. What do you have? A sim card? Yep. Is it gonna show work, right? Yeah. If it doesn't, I'll uh, I'll hook you up. Yeah, here. You're all set. There's no, just just. Oh, you want to switch? Yeah, for right now? Oh, no, you yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Take both of okay. Yeah, off you go. Jack, help him with that. Thanks. Cool. Let's take a step back here. Hey, good to see you. Likewise. <laughs> Thanks. So, as of right now, not 100% sure. Again, we saw the guy uh, with the limp. Good to see you. I don't really like the guy. See ya. What's up? I said, that, that doesn't really like the guy. It, he was limping, but, you know, just because you have a limp doesn't mean you crashed a car. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll catch up with you in a minute. So, um, again, we saw him coming through the alley. Um, I saw the same thing that the officers did. That's why they took him into custody. He was limping. Um, if you have a guy who's uh, kind of matching, you know, the description and, you know, looking the part at that point, then obviously they're going to take him into custody. Whether he gets released or not, that's going to be uh, whether they can confirm uh, that the guy was in the car at the time of the crash. I'm kind of on the fence. I would say 20% chance he was in the car. And we have a witness that stated that he went southbound on San Pedro. So if that's the case, then uh, then that's not going to be uh, that's not going to be our guy. So, all right. Creepy alley, huh? So um, we've got a uh, water flow alarm. Um, so how this how this came out? Uh, we have a water flow alarm. It's coming out right now. Let's hear the dispatch. Give me one second. All right, you heard it yourselves. Um, we have a. Uh, Rubbish fire that has gotten into a one-story commercial building, which, again, it's like, you know, I, I don't want to be like we're on an episode of Scooby-Doo, but it, it uh, these, these types of things happen over and over and over again in, in the city, and it's where we kind of go in waves, where we get... Auto fire. Okay. We get certain types of incidents that will start coming up, you know, again and again. And, excuse me, and um, when you have an incident uh, like this, we've been to a few of these fires where we've had a, uh, you know, a commercial building that's been exposed by either a homeless encampment or a rubbish fire, and it's gotten into the building, and they've lost the entire building because of it. Somebody's business, you know, their livelihood, multiple people's jobs, right? And then, um, there we go. Which radio is that? Hey, that's working. All right. So um, that's really cool, actually. So, you know, it's not just a little fire into somebody's uh, into, into a building. It's somebody's business and their livelihood. And uh, you know, we we talk about this on Code Two Zero fairly often because we see it fairly often. Um, it's it's just become a more common uh, type of incident. But it hasn't been throughout the years. This is a this is a recent uh, a recent development. So uh, we got our TAC channel assigned, and we're uh, we're gonna just take Central straight down. And we'll see uh, we'll see what they're saying when we get over here. So, sorry, I had to organize and figure out what's going on because we got Jack over on the, uh, he's following a pursuit. Keith has a, uh, what sounds like some type of incident on the, uh, on the uh, 118 with like a fire or something like that. And you can see the fire trucks in front of us. Past Granny and the Lexus. We don't. 
Yeah. 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 Two hundred by, by three hundred commercial building. Commercial building. Oh crap! We do have a sprinkler activation uh, bell going off. <clears throat> we are in the offensive mode. I'll be known as twenty. All right, enough of this. Ah, oh, I can't. Pass. Gabe, come on, answer. All right, so this this is going to be a big. Um, if it does take off, this will be a, a very large uh, fire. However, I don't. Uh, we don't. We don't want to block uh, hydrants or apparatus or anything like that. So we're gonna we're gonna flip around and take the corner here. And heavy smoke. It looks like uh, down the street. Hey, jump out right here. I don't want to block you into the uh, sidewalk. There you go. All right, let's see what we got. You can hear the uh, alarm bells going off. That's going to be annoying, I'm sure. He's thinking the same thing. He doesn't want to get stuck. Hey, 467, I might be extended on this. Um, let me know if they get a knockdown or they call a knockdown or anything like that. It's a massive building. Just, uh, I got my radio turned up. Let me know what we got. How the hell do we get in this building? This thing's huge. Holy crap. Okay, we're having access problems, but I, I copy. Thank you. Hey, how do we get in this thing? They haven't even gotten in there. I can see the... Uh... You can see all the smoke back here, but... How do we... Oh, how'd they get over there? Great. How'd they get over there? This building is so big, it's, it's hard to, uh, obviously we can see the smoke, we know we've got a fire, and I just saw some firefighters go down that alley, that's where we want to be. Big fire? Here we go, there's a loaded supply line right there. Here we go. How the hell are we going to get in here? Huh? This is like, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. There was Jack, he's out of here. Uh, 
We got good smoke, so. <laughs> Jack showed up, looked at the looked at the smoke, and then he's like, I'm out of here. He goes, they're sending everybody, see ya. Yeah, he's got another call. So when you see a when you see a loaded uh, supply line. Watch out, watch out. There we go. There's the smoke. If we're following the following the hoses. <laughs> Jeez. Whew. All right. Hard to tell if we've got. Oh no, we've got fire in there. That's 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 fire. That's not steam. Wish sure we had some more wind down here. The guys have wind all over the city, and we have like nothing. So we've definitely got. Uh... It's hard to tell if it's if it's coming off of the pile that's still smoldering, or if it's actually in the building or not. You can hear all the fire trucks coming, huh? It's like the whole the whole city's coming down here right now. When you have a building, you look at the product that we're dealing with in here, it's got like, you know, uh, fabrics. Look at this guy with the bucket. Look at this guy. So when you have a, a warehouse, you know, we walk the whole front of it, that's easily 200 feet, right? So we've got a 200 foot, or maybe even more, this direction, and then about, almost 300 feet the other direction and we're looking at not super pressurized smoke but you've got any smoke in a building you look at these products you see the products here you see the fabrics when we've got fabrics like that in a building this large you got to imagine the rest of the building is full of that and then we get a fire like the one that we had uh what was it was it last year tay the fire we had last year with alex where you've got fire blowing out the uh blowing out the windows and stuff Smoke seems to be dissipating on the top. I'm just seeing steam, but we do have a little bit of dark stuff over here. So right now this could go uh, this could go one of two ways. They get a quick knockdown. We got a guy pulling the hose here like crazy. He's pulling a ton of hose. Holy cow! Where's Where's 
So this can go one or two ways. I'm seeing some glowing up here in the top left. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like it's glowing in the attic space. So either what's gonna happen is they're gonna find that with the thermal imaging and they're gonna get a quick knockdown on this and we're gonna save this building. Or you can see it glowing. I don't know if you can see at the top left corner, there's a yellow glow, you see that? They're looking to the right and they've got fire to the left right now. I'm not, yeah, you can see that cooking right there. Let me see if I can get a shot of that. It looks like they got water on it just now. And like I was saying, let me finish what I was saying. Uh, it can go, something like this can go one or two ways, right? You've got a situation where you have a building just packed with flammables. And if a little bit of fire in there gets enough oxygen and enough fuel, it's just gonna go. And it'll run this entire building, okay? It'll literally through the roof out every door, it gets nuts. So it's really good that they got such a quick, uh, such a quick knockdown on this. They got the doors open, they got in there and with, aggressively uh, got to the seat of the fire. Because um, again, something like this, if they're not as quick and not as aggressive, something like this can get out of control big time. And that's those fires that we've seen before where we have fire through the roof, fire out the doors. I'm saying, holy crap, this is nuts. But um, it looks like from what we're seeing here, they've got a good, uh, a good handle on this right now. So I, I think we're gonna be, I think we're gonna be good on this. There was a question the other day. Um, some of you were asking why I don't carry a, a LEC fire radio with me when we're at an incident. And the reason for that is we're so close uh, in proximity to a firefighter, we can hear the TAC channel that we're working on when we're there. So there's, there's normally not a reason to bring one out. If it's a, um, if it's a police type incident, it's like a barricaded suspect, it's a tactical thing, then we usually stay by the car. We have, we'll have the radios listening to what's going on. But for something like this, there's radios all around us. We can hear everything that's happening. I mean, the captain was putting out a size up, update on the size up, what they had, and he's standing right here. So it's very easy for us to stand here and hear what's going on and also to see it as well. You see that? You see that down there too, right? Hey, Cap. Cap. You can see fire in the wall on the top all the way down to the end on the left. We we're seeing it right, uh, it went away right here, right here. We saw a little bit of fire coming out right there. So I don't know if it's in the, in between the floor, you know what I mean? Cause there's a, or between the, see, there it is, right there. Right, see it, turn off your light, you can see it. There you go, got it, right there. Yeah, it just poked out for a second. I think it might be in the, uh, I was showing the captain, we've got the glow. I don't know if you're picking it up on on your camera. Let me see if I can uh, zoom in on it, but it's a very light, very light glow. I'll, put, I'll max it out and see if we can, I'm gonna zoom in here. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's super hard to see. So it's, it might be in the, in the I, I call it the floor because usually you have separation um, between two floors. But this looks like a one story with like a storage area above it. And it might be running in the attic space if there is an attic space. Or there's like a, there's like a separation on this, this I-beam right here. It's just kind of weird. If that starts running the building though, that's a problem. That's a, that's a big problem. You can really see it glowing. It's actually dropping little sparks out right now. There it goes. See that? Hey, Tay, move down to your left a little. We've got power lines above us. Move. Here, watch the cap. Watch the cap. Hang on. Right about... Right here, right here. Because you got to look up. Yeah, look at that. You see it glowing? That's kind of creepy if you see it 
if you see it glowing in there. It's actually really creepy. Right there, you see it flash? It's, it's looking for oxygen right now is what it's doing. So they got that, that's great. Oh, it's, it's in there, yeah. This is the weirdest, I don't know what's above this. It's like a, it almost looks like a storage thing. It's not quite a two-story. All right, so basically it's just a bunch of uh, smoke poking around in the attic. Um, we're gonna listen on the radio, see what it turns into. I don't think it's gonna turn into anything. Um, they've got a bunch more uh, resources showing up and usually when city puts this much equipment on a fire, it doesn't go anywhere. So we're gonna listen on the radio and we're gonna go back uh, available. If there's any more calls, that's, uh, that's where we wanna be, not stuck here. Smelling like smoke, it is like stinky, major, major stinky. Why is it stinky? Thank <laughs> you.